Islamic militants slaughter hundreds of innocent people on Easter Sunday, 2019. Welcome to the Charles Carroll Society. I am your host, the self-appointed Bard of the American Readout. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell. Um, Apparently, YouTube has said subscribing to a channel means nothing if you don't hit the bell to receive notifications. At least, at minimum, 290 people were killed and over 500 people wounded after eight explosions destroyed Western hotels or hotels that cater to Westerners and primarily Catholic and a Protestant church in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is a small island off the coast of India. So far, 24 people have been arrested and apparently seven Islamic militant suicide bombers detonated their bombs simultaneously. At this time, the authorities believe that the Islamic group name, National, whatever this name is, uh, you guys always make fun of me when I name butcher stuff around so you can read it on the screen. This group is the one who is responsible. The reason they believe that is because Sri Lanka received warning from a foreign intelligence services that this group was planning attacks against Christians in Sri Lanka. These, this group is led by this guy, name I'm not going to try to pronounce, and he has previously been all over YouTube, by the way. Uh, conservatives are banned on YouTube all the time, but this guy speaks about how uh, his racial group and his religion is superior to all others and has the right to violently dominate all other faiths. By the way, this group has not only slaughtered uh, Catholics and Christians, uh, the, the, these Islamic groups in Sri Lanka have also slaughtered uh, Buddhists there who are practicing and attempting to practice their faith in peace. So unlike Muslims, uh, we who are Christian uh, should acknowledge the, the horror that is visited upon other faiths uh, like Buddhism by Muslims. When did this happen? It happened on Sunday, 21st, April 2019, on Easter Sunday which is the actually holiest day in the Catholic and, I assume, uh, Christian calendars. Uh, Just for your edification, the churches on Easter are filled with children and new converts. That's why they did this. You haven't heard that anywhere else in any coverage of this, because moronic uh, journalism from the lying liberal legacy media don't know anything about right-wing or conservative groups and Christians. And Easter, on Easter Sunday, is the final day that we welcome new converts into the Christian faith, and most likely this was one of the reasons why Muslims targeted uh, these churches. It is noteworthy to note that Holy Week 2019 started by, a, I feel, a very suspicious fire consuming much of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, in Paris, and then ended with nearly 300 men, women, and children, including new converts to Catholicism, being annihilated by Muslim suicide bombings in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is a nation that basically is about 21 million people. Um, it is actually dominated by a Sinhalese-speaking Buddhist majority. The, church, the places that were attacked by these Muslims were St. Sebastian Catholic Church, St. Anthony Catholic Shrine, Zion Church, which as far as I know is some form of Protestant evangelical congregation, the Kingsbury Hotel, the Shangri-La Hotel, the Cinnamon Grand Hotel, the Tropical Inn Hotel, and the ho- housing complex. St. Sebastian's Church is in a Catholic-majority town named Nemimbo, Negimbo, N-E-G-O-M-B-O, names on the screen. Um, and it's uh, very interesting because we actually have a video of the um, Islamic extremists entering the church, wearing a large backpack, and walking into the building. It is of interesting to note that police in Sri Lanka have released um, some information that says that material covered from the explosions inside these Catholic churches show that metal balls had been uh, interlaced and attached with the bombs to inflict the maximum amount of shrapnel damage uh, to the innocent people who were there. Also, hotels that cater to Westerners were targeted. One of the hotel managers said that the attacker had registered at night that night before at the hotel under the name Mohammed Azim Mohammed and that he had gone with his backpack to a buffet line 
where many children, uh, young people and children and various people had come down from the hotel to eat in the buffet that morning. Uh, several families lost all of all or most of their children, including some British um, uh, families because the parents were kind of up in the hotel room uh, having a lazy morning and they let their kids go down to eat thinking they were safe and they were annihilated by these Muslim terrorists. One of the reasons that um, individuals and groups uh, have decided to begin to defend the West and Western culture is because they are of the firm opinion that not only aren't Western governments capable of defending them, but they feel that Western governments do not want to defend them. Um, And Western governments seem to prove that time and time again. On your screen is a tweet from Hillary Clinton talking about uh, the New Zealand white national terrorist attack, which is fair to call. And in the tweet, she says, my heart breaks for New Zealand and the global Muslim community. We must continue to fight the perpetration and normalization of Islamophobia, a made up word, by the way, and racism in all its forms. White supremacist, he wasn't a white supremacist, he was a white nationalist. Terrorists must be condemned by leaders everywhere. Their murderous hatred must be stopped. Um, As we all know, all white nationalists, or actually probably to say the majority of white nationalists, aren't violent. White nationalism uh, is not uh, directly synonymous with racism. White supremacy most likely is. But white separatism and white nationalism, like black separatism and black nationalism, like Hispanic separatism and Hispanic nationalism, is not directly connected to racism. These are people who simply want to live separately. So her tweet here is full of lies because she has gazillions of dollars more than I do and she has more education than I do. So you'd assume that Hillary Clinton would know more than I do. So I don't believe this is a mistake. I believe this is willful ignorance. But the most interesting thing is watch on your screen now is a tweet about the Islamic Muslims attacking uh, primarily Catholic churches and some hotels catering to Westerners. In this, she says, on this holy weekend for many faiths, we must stand united against hatred and violence. I'm praying for everyone affected by today's horrific attacks on Easter worshipers and travelers in Sri Lanka. Hillary Clinton is a Christian. She knows we don't worship Easter, which is actually Esther, I believe a Nordic god of fertility, um, which Catholics have uh, kind of kind of overlaid Christianity when they were in uh, busy converting the, the Vikings. Uh, and this Holy Week is uh, holy for many faiths? Which ones? Well, the only ones that I know of are Christians and Jews. But this was an attack on Jews. This was an attack on Christians and Catholics in this nation. You notice that she doesn't name who attacked them. She doesn't name who the victims are. She doesn't say that we need to deal with the, the, the people behind that and fight Christophobia or people who are attacking Christians all over the world. By the way, Christians are the most um, persecuted religious group in the world. So we'll go to our great friend Barack Obama. This is his tweet about the New Zealand attack. Michelle and I send our condolences to the people of New Zealand. We grieve with you and the Muslim community. All of us must stand against hatred in all its forms. So let's look at what Barack Obama said about Muslim terrorists slaughtering Catholics. The attacks on tourists and Easter worshipers in Sri Lanka are an attack on humanity. Well, first of all, there's no such thing as Easter Easter worshipers. We should call Muslims. Why doesn't he call Muslims Mohammedists? Why don't he call them Hajj worshipers. It's like an insult. Why can't Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton utter the word Christian or, more specifically, Catholic? On a day devoted to love, redemption, and renewal, we pray for the victims and stand with the people of Sri Lanka. He doesn't stand with Christians. This is why people are taking it among themselves to use to defend themselves because they believe that their governments are unable and unwilling to defend them. Here's a tweet from Theresa May talking about the uh, the attack on New Zealand. On behalf of the UK, my deepest condolence to the people of New Zealand after the horrifying terrorist attack in Christchurch. She identifies it as a terrorist attack. My thoughts are all, with all those affected by this sickening act of violence. So what did Theresa May say when Christians were slaughtered? The effect, the attacks of violence against churches and hotels, not Christians, 
Churches and hotel, not Catholic churches in Sri Lanka, are truly appalling, and my deepest sympathies go out to all those affected by this at this tragic time. We must stand together to make sure that no one should have ever have to ever practice their faith in fear. She doesn't use the word Christian, just like Hillary and Obama. I'm sure that if we go find the woman who leads Germany, she can't bring herself to say anything about Christians either. One of the things that you won't hear in any other coverage but here is an exact description of what's being happened. It is my opinion there are powerful forces that do not wish Western civilization and the Western man to be able to connect the dots. It is not churches and tourists that are being attacked. It is Christians, and it is not Christians in general that are being attacked. Notre Dame was a Catholic cathedral. Catholicism is being attacked. Um, In Sri Lanka... It's not Christianity in general being attacked. It's St. Sebastian Church in a a town that is now majority Catholic. It is um, not Christianity in general that was attacked. It was St. Anthony Shrine in Colombo that was savage. And I will admit that there was a Zion's Church, which uh, doing just only a little bit of research, and people can correct me in the comments below, uh, is some type of Protestant evangelical congregation. But what connects the dots is Islam's constant slaughter of Catholics all over the world and other Christians, but generally Catholics. Why do you believe that the enemies of the West attack the Catholic Church at home, uh, attack their rights to practice their faith in public, and uh, and abroad, uh, violently slaughter them as much as they can? They do that because Catholicism is their biggest impediment. It is one of their top three enemies worldwide. Another thing, another analysis that you won't find anywhere else is the concept of what do these terrorists want? You see, first you have to name your enemy, Islamic terrorism or Muslims or militant Islam. You can use the term militant Islam. Some people would say that militant Islam are all Muslims, but you could choose to use that if you chose. But what do they want? I don't think the West has never described what they want. Who, who can tell you? Ben Shapiro is a smart guy. Does he tell you what the terrorists want? He does not. Because I sometimes think he may not know what the terrorists want. But I am a minority from a city, Chicago, that has a powerful and deep and old uh, Islamic uh, movement inside that city. I can tell you exactly what the Muslims want. The Muslims have said to every brown and black person in the world, Asian and whatever, that they must unite under the banner of Islam and attack white people. Well, There's a lot of black people and brown people who don't want to go and attack anybody. They want to manage their business, stay in their their nations, you know, chase after whatever girl and live their life in peace. And Islam says the Islamist terrorists, the militant Islam says there is a worldwide jihad and there will be no peace. That's what House of Islam, the House of War and the House of Peace mean. Only when you submit yourself to Islam and as a woman start pushing out little suicide bombers at 12 years old, will we allow you to live in peace? That's exactly what the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria said. What these guys want is that every single brown and black person in Sri Lanka and everywhere else in the world understands that they will never live in peace until they unite with Islam and attack the West. A lot of these people don't want to attack the West. They just want to go about their own business. But Islam says, we will slaughter you and continue to slaughter you from now on and to unite with us and wage war against white, generally Western civilization in particular, white Western civilization. What can you do? Well, um, in Sri Lanka, I doubt, I don't know, but I hope that those churches are rebuilt. But there's nothing that can uh, bring back the lives and the dead. Please remember that when they say over 500 people dead and uh, nearly 300 people, people who are, I'm sorry, over 500 people wounded and nearly 300 people dead, Please notice that those 500 people wounded are probably savage for life. They've, they, they have slaughtered, like I said, in Easter, Easter Sunday is when people go through their confirmation. They go, from, go through their, uh, uh, their, their final steps into becoming a Catholic. So there are children upon, stacked upon children who are dead, uh, innocent people who have converted to uh, Catholicism uh, who are dead. So those people can't be brought back. And even the wounded are probably shattered. Uh, by life. That's one of the things that militant Islam does. It rapes uh, people, rapes women so that they can never create healthy relationships with men. And they savage people like this so that even the survivors spread fear and terror and cannot um, 
uh, cannot function normally. So one of the things we can do is we can take care of and understand that there is a global jihad and to care as much about the Sri Lankan people as we care about the Notre Dame Cathedral. Slaughtering innocents who are minding their own business, trying to find their own life uh, in, the, in, in their countries uh, is just as bad. The, one of the militant Islamic group called Boko Haram means Western knowledge is forbidden. People who want to just learn about science and the natural sciences and live their life in peace in Nigeria will not be allowed to do that. That's what they have said. Um, another thing you can do if you would like to do something in your own personal life, it is my opinion that the only thing that can save our Western civilization is medieval Christianity. That is what I believe. And the only medieval Christianity that exists still today is traditional Catholicism, not New Age um, Pope Francis Catholicism, but actual traditional Catholicism. If you are interested in trying to understand why Catholicism, traditional Catholicism specifically, is the number one threat to all of these people, go find a parish that belongs to the Society of St. Pius X or the Fraternity of St. Peter or Immaculate King, uh, Christ the King. Uh, back east, there's many of those. Go find whatever parish, drive however far you need to, and go sit and talk to a priest and think about it. I would love to see, I would love to see in reaction to these constant attacks by Muslims against the Catholic faith, that there is an overwhelming, uh, a huge amount of conversion to traditional Catholic faith. And the more they attack the more we unify uh, around what they see as their greatest threat. Viva Crystal Ray, Viva Crystal Ray, Viva Crystal Ray, either Virgin of Guadalupe.